Hi everyone, today we are back here at Kurazin, the place where Jesus has taught in a synagogue 2000 years ago. And today we have something extremely exciting to share with you. Ready? Let's go. Let's go. In the pages of the Bible, Kurazin is recorded as being one of the cities where Jesus had preached and performed miracles. But due to the unbelief of the people in the city, Jesus pronounced the famous words, Woe to you, Kurazin, woe to you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And since the establishment of this national park in 2002, millions of visitors have come here to gaze upon the cursed city of Chorazin. But here is the problem. How do we really know that this is the actual biblical Chorazin? This is not the first century. Yeah. This is not how you build in the first century. This site had been excavated for over a hundred years, but almost nothing substantial was found that dated back to the time of Jesus. The earliest findings were of the late 3rd century. In other words, the findings only date to at least 300 years after Jesus walked the earth. Okay, so for the, so the first thing we did is open the floor of these buildings and going down further down, maybe the earlier stages, the 1st century is down there. And you can see that we hit bedrock here and no first century here at least. Yeah. Rod and I had been here before, two years ago, and made a video about this place as we met with the lead archaeologist Ahia Koen Tavor, who was lifting ancient stones and searching for evidence of a first century dwelling. But back at that time, they did not yet find the evidence. No, not so far on the excavations here haven't pinpoint anything that dates back, back to 2000 years old, to the time of Jesus Christ. So we left this place with a big question. Is this really the Chorazin that's mentioned in the Bible? And today we're back. We're back because we were given access to Joan Achia as he's making a groundbreaking discovery. I've been excavating all over and for me it's definitely one of the most important excavation I ever directed. Wow. Maybe the most important. So join us today as we come alongside Achia on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to excavate an ancient synagogue of Chorazin. To avoid the scorching heat of the Israeli summer sun, Sergio and I had to get out very early in the morning. The excavation site we are going to is located inside a national park. And since the park is still closed, we had to get a special permission to enter. Um, so the park is actually closed, but they are working in the park. And uh, the Achia asked the park's authority to let us in. to let us in to film this uh, because they're excavating here. So that's a pretty cool opportunity. All right, let's go. Let's go. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? Good, good to see you. We've met Achia a few years ago at the Bethsaida dig where they found the lost church of the apostles. Already back then, we were astonished at Achia's vast knowledge in ancient ceramics and his ability to recognize and put a date to the unearthed findings. North African bowl, pretty well dated, all over the Mediterranean. And shortly after Bethsaida, he invited us to come to Chorazin, where he was digging for evidence of first century buildings. All the excavations here haven't pinpointed anything date back, back to 2000 years old, to the time of Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, back at that time, they did not find the evidence. And Roto and I left with a question mark. Is this really the biblical Chorazin? So today we are back in a hope to find the missing evidence. Okay, so we were here two years ago and you were excavating this dwelling place, Ascension dwelling place, to try to find if there's evidence of first century right uh, for this site and did you find that did you find it not yet not yet but we're still looking for in other places so let's go and see what we did find okay 
two years ago, Achia started excavating the southeast corner of the park, where he believes there could be evidence of first century dwellings. Okay, so the first thing we did is open the floor of these buildings and going down further down, maybe the earlier stages, the first century is down there. And you can see that we hit bedrock here, there's no architecture down here, and no first century here at least. Yeah. So um, we're still trying, still working okay. on that. Okay, but no evidence yet Not in this evidence site. Yet so, but, but then you started also excavation in a few other That's places right. to see if there's evidence for a century there. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Take a look at that. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> After failing to find the first century at this very spot, Achia moved on to excavate just outside the walls. And to his surprise, they stumbled upon an ancient wine press with beautiful mosaic floor. So we moved on and this is where we found pieces of uh, tessera, mosaic stones running around. We excavated this and we came across a wine press, a very elaborate one, wine press with decorated mosaic. Uh, it gives us uh, insight into those people's lives and what they made the living from, mm -hmm. making wine. Pretty unique, you don't have much of these, so uh, it's, a, it's a very nice one, but not first century, <laughs> it's a fifth century. But once again, this too dates to the fifth century. But luckily, Achia and his team had another promising section where they started digging. It is located just outside the National Park, alongside an ancient trail which is believed to have been taken by Jesus when he walked from Capernaum to Chorazin. We are actually walking in Jesus' footsteps, literally. Wow. I mean, you can pinpoint, this is a way, the road from Capernaum down there on the Sea of Galilee to Chorazin, and this is where he walked. That is so cool. So we do expect people to come and walk in Jesus' footsteps, and by walking that, you can also see the, the site itself, and we're going into one of the oil, oil presses that we just excavated. This area is still under excavations and general entry is prohibited. However, as the lead archaeologist, Achia is giving us a sneak peek at this latest discovery. Careful here. Wow. Look right here, I can hold your hands here. Let me hold your hand here. So careful, these are, these are not. Okay, and careful, these rocks here. So, this is an olive press, and those huge crushing stones were used for crushing those stones. And it, I mean, it's on work, we just kind of finished excavating here today. And olive oil is running here to that vat here. Wow. Which is fresh, you can still see it's wet. I mean, just finished excavating that. And but still, this is third to fifth round century, kind okay. of oil press. This is not the first century, but still beautiful. Beautifully wow. made, I mean, okay. very impressive. Unfortunately, this well-preserved olive press dates only to the fifth century and not to the time of Jesus. Okay. This is an incredible discovery. It's beautiful. And it's the fact that it's right by the trail that Jesus would have taken to come to Chorazin is absolutely astonishing. Uh, this is going to be awesome once this opens and uh, for, for tourists to come and see. Incredible. But since this place does not date to the first century either, we go to our final excavation spot, to the ancient synagogue where Achia is making a groundbreaking discovery. This ancient synagogue is the epicenter of the Chorazin Park. This is where they found a rare seed of Moses with an Aramaic inscription. For the past 100 years, this synagogue was believed to have been built in the late 3rd century. However, this belief seems to be wrong, as today Achia is revealing to us a groundbreaking discovery for the very first time. Uh, so, 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 what are you primarily doing here? What is the what brought you back here to excavate it? This is, I mean, first and foremost, we want to pinpoint Jesus. 
This is accepted to be a synagogue built around 380. Mm -hmm. I tell you it's not, but yeah. in later stage. So now we know that Jesus walked that trail from Capernaum up to Chorazim. It's about mm -hmm. an hour walk. You can walk it today. Yeah. And came here and preached in a synagogue from the first century. This is not the first century. Yeah. This is not how you build in the first century. But is the first century synagogue is just beneath the later synagogue. I mean, what when you renovate, yeah. don't move the whole building usually. You just yeah. take it down and make a new one. So our main goal here is opening the floor, as you see, of the later synagogue and going down into the hopefully first century. Wow. So you're here to find the evidence that this was a synagogue from the first century. The evidence that was missing all these years. People coming here, well, believing that this would be the synagogue from the first century where Jesus said it went, but there was no hard proof evidence. And that's what you're doing. You're going down to find the evidence. Now, uh, I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, Achia was given an exceptional opportunity to lift the floor of the fifth century synagogue. Most of the, I mean, all the archaeologists excavating here saw that and said, okay, this is bedrock. Oh. We're done with archaeology. This is a lower level. For the past hundred years, archaeologists excavating this site thought they reached bedrock. However, when Achia kept digging, he examined the stones and realized it was no bedrock. These turned out to be giant boulders placed there by men in the ancient times. So somebody brought those giant boulders here almost two millennia ago. And your <laughs> the big question is, when? When? <laughs> How heavy is that thing? It should be about 400 to 600 pounds. Wow. And this is not the largest. Oh, oh no way. And the, 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 the bigger ones probably weighs 2,000 pounds or something like that. Wow. And we're not going to touch it. <laughs> it's not only just lifting it, it's also getting it apart. Because this construction, I mean, what I have in mind here is Machu Picchu kind of stuff. Wow. You know, those yeah. dry, huge boulders fitting one another, and you can, can't get between them. And this is so tight. So why are you lifting up those rocks? What's the purpose of that? Yeah. Okay. Because I can't date the rock itself yeah. when it was put here. What I can date, date is a pottery and hopefully coins coming from there uh, between rocks and definitely what's beneath it, between bedrock and in in those boulders. Whatever I get from between those stones would be dating the construction of the synagogue here. Wow. So they excavated this square and they reached bedrock and that's how it looks like. You can't go any more lower than that. But over here, if you take a look, this isn't bedrock. And you can see how the rocks here, they're just fitted together. But if this was covered with dirt, it was hard to tell. You would think, oh, that's bedrock. And maybe that's why they didn't go lower in the first time in excavations. But now I saw that this is not bedrock. You see ridges between them and you can actually go down. And so they lift those rocks up with this machine here, with this contraption. And they're super heavy. Uh, and yet they're able to reach lower levels and go to the lower strata and find pottery shards from first century. That's incredible. Okay. This is first century pottery. This is a very nice bowl. We call it Megai bowl. Um, fine ware. Um, and the cooking pots. This is a, yeah, an oil lamp. You can see the tooth, the, the smoke. Oh. It would still be there. Yeah. Wow. After 2,000 years, you still have, like, really touching those people's life. Yeah. The smoke yeah. of the light. Yeah. Somebody held it and put yeah. the wick in it and yeah. turned it on. And this is all first century this pottery. This is first century pottery. And you found it in there. Right there. Where he's standing. Wow. All this came from beneath the floor of the synagogue. Yeah. And it's first century. Yeah. That's incredible. Latest first century. <laughs> okay. That's incredible. Wow, and look at this decoration here. Yeah. So beautiful. 
Does this sound mean that there is something? Yeah, this uh, high tone beat. This is the coolest synagogue we've ever seen because we're actually seeing the excavation and process of going down to the first century. It's mind blowing. I mean, you don't get to see this kind of stuff. This is once in a lifetime. How often do you find a synagogue from a first century in Israel? <laughs> Not that often. So they just found a piece of bronze, what could be a decoration. And Chia is putting all the paperwork in right now to document it. Uh, that's archaeology. A little bit of adventure, some sense of uh, mystery, excitement, but also lots of paperwork. And dust. Dust. <laughs> hey, you're digging. <laughs> yeah. Good type of dust. Ancient, Ancient dust. dust. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> So, okay, so now to the main question, right. is this synagogue if built on the first century synagogue or not? What have you found so far? So, I have to be cautious here, okay? Because as a scientist, I look at the data, and which the data here is coins and pottery shards, yeah. datable coins and pottery shards. From the platform itself, we have two different dates in two different spots. One is late Roman, meaning around 3rd century AD, and one is a 1st century AD. Mm. My feeling we are going into again to the 1st th uh, century, because these huge boulders were, when put here, went moved since, till mm. we came, mm -hmm. okay? So when they renovated uh, synagogues, and we know they renovated, they didn't touch the podium itself. Mm. I assume that this podium might have been built in the first century, and when they renovated, they just took the whole building out, and what we got left of it is just the pottery on the boulders themselves. Wow. Well, thank you. That's, that's incredible. I mean, this is the most evidence of first century dwellings here ever. found ever yeah many archaeological digs leave us with more questions than answers and until today the site of Chorazin fell into that same category with a daunting question is this the same place that is mentioned in the bible Th this is the big question for us to answer especially when we came here is this the place where jesus was or is it not and this is this is awesome. So the fact that Achia and his team were able to dig out more evidence that brings us closer to the answer is remarkable. So people now coming here or who will come here in the future will be more confident in knowing, hey, yeah. the work that's been done this year or past year, just the, now recently supports this, uh, yeah. this claim. That's awesome. Yeah. What they found here this season are only clues of the first century. There is still a lot of work to be done. And the actual first century synagogue is yet to be found. So we're taking more and more boulders out to get as much as pottery and maybe coins, hopefully coins also, which would support one of the assumptions. Rodo and I hope to be able to come here one day and find more answers. Until then, we're left with an exciting thought that the first century synagogue might still be lying somewhere here under the ancient stones. This is so exciting that even to think about Jewish people lived here 1500 years ago and you're now finding a strata from 2,000 years ago. And, and it's just when you, I still can get over the fact that you said you prayed here in the morning and here you are 2,000 years later, still Jewish people in the old back and now able to learn about this and even, and even pray here. Uh, my hair is standing up just yeah. thinking about it. <laughs> it's, it's so incredible. Definitely. Wow. Yeah, thank you so much thank for, you. for a wonderful <laughs> tour explanation. This is so exciting. Um, it is. Uh, this is, this I'm, is awesome. I'm so in it and I'm still <laughs> shivering. <laughs> I want to get that Well, we're sharing your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, we wish you all the best to uh, continue excavation. Uh, more, uh, more exciting seasons to come. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Thanks so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Till next time. 
See you. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, don't go anywhere because we have still something very cool to show you about a very unique creature that lives in this area and you won't believe what we found out about it. But before that, we'd like to thank the park administration for having us and a special thanks to Achia for showing us around and explaining about these incredible findings. Absolutely. I mean, if you guys like to come to Israel and experience archaeology with your own hands, Achia is your guy. He actually has a company called Dagesh. Check out on his Facebook page in the link description below and you can actually come to Israel and be involved in an archaeological dig. And what is also cool is that you can schedule a virtual Zoom lecture, a kind of a tour, where he explains some incredible things from his archaeological digs. So we have his link down below. Make sure to check that. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And we'll see you next time. Bye. You see the Hyrexes? Yeah, look how many, whole family. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wow! Wow! How cool is that? Now, I always ask people visiting here, and if people will see this episode and come here and they say, and they'll know the answer. What is the closest living relative of an Hyrex? Uh, the closest relative of a Hyrex? Uh, you want to guess? Beaver? Beaver. North America. Forget it. <laughs> okay, it's another guess. Cut. <laughs> Koipu? 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 No. Uh, Hyrex. <gasps> Squirrels? Again, I, I always thought they were little bears. <laughs> Cats? No. no, not right. no. Um, You're not gonna guess. It's okay. okay. <laughs> You're not the only one because okay. nobody guesses. Okay, wait, 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 wait. So, uh, what is there? Uh, we said Koipu, beaver, uh, hamster. Hamster? No. Uh, rat? No. Uh, 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 ooh, uh, like what are those um, uh, those little mammals? Uh, uh, those uh, coyote? No. The rodents, okay? R oh, the rodents. The, the rodents. <laughs> but the closest living, it's a hint. The closest relative is not a rodent. Oh. What is it then? An elephant. What? <laughs> what? No, it can't be. No. Serious. <laughs> How? Like DNA wise, when you do the no, more the like DNA. bone wise, you bones. know, the anthropologists yeah. and the biologists they take bones and they compare the structure of bones. Yeah. And their closest relatives are elephants. <laughs> <laughs>